OK, all right, let's start. Now, uh, if you remember, we were doing, we have done digital, uh, digital signals, we have done analog signals, right? We have seen how those different signals are converted and also transmitted. But at the same time, we were saying that most of the time, we have seen that we are only transmitting one signal at a time, right? So this chapter will basically look at how do we combine the signals into one single media. Right? Multiple signals transmitting over a same line. That's what multiplexing is all about. Sharing of the transmission media. Right, so a little bit of background. First of all, normally is that we have one signal traveling on transmission media. Right, when, one, when someone is transmitting, no one else can transmit. Normally, that's the case. Right, but the thing is, I mean, whether this is efficient or whether this is desirable. Of course, it's not efficient, right? If only one person using the capacity or the bandwidth is not good, right, for obvious reasons. And also expensive and all that. So one solution for this will be to share the transmission media, right? So why do we need to share? Basically, we want to share the capacity, right? We want to share the bandwidth, we want to share the utilization. And let's say one person, you, you, one person uh, basically uh, get a uh, fiber optic cable, for example, right? But if you're only one using it, then you're not using the bandwidth efficiently. Most of the time, it's empty. Right, so if you share it, then you are basically, multiple pe people can be used at the same time, right? And also in terms of cost, you can share the cost. Right, so the benefits are good. What are the drawbacks? The drawbacks, well, if you share means that many people are sharing the same cable, uh, same uh, transmission media, that means you're sh sharing the same facilities. So the possible possibility of uh, eavesdropping or possibility of uh, security issues come into play. Right, because it's no longer exclusive. Right, so that's the background. So multiplexing, what it basically is that is is sharing of transmission media by multiple signals. That's what it means. Multiple signals are multiplexed onto the same media. Right. So different signals transmitted simultaneously use across single data link. And of course, the the link must be high speed. Right. So if you want to share. Uh, a media transmission media, say by 10 users, 100 users, make sure your, your link is very fast. It can support all the different number of users. So multiplexing requires special equipment and also special techniques. Right? We will take a look at this later. And of course, it tries to uh, efficiently utilize the bandwidth of the transmission media. Right? So how do we do this? The basic idea is that we will have multiple users or multiple lines coming in, input lines of data. All the data lines, all the da individual data will be combined together and sent onto one single link. Right? How do we do this? We need special equipment here. We need a multiplexer on this side. So the multiplexer will combine the individual signals from different users onto a same, same uh, transmission media, transmit over. On the other side, on the receiving side, we need a, a demultiplexer which will extract out the individual signals from the combined signal to be output into the individual lines again. Right? So you have N input, you must have N output. Right? And uh, the multiplexer, so it, it, the equipment works that multiplexer and demultiplexer, they work in pairs. The multiplexer will combine the signals, transmit over the same line and then demultiplexer will be extract out individual uh, signals from there, right? So how do we do it? We'll, we'll take a look at this later. So this is basically what is so multiple signal data coming in from different channel, different uh, input lines. They will be somehow combined, transmit over the same cable, and then on the other side, the demultiplexer will extract out the data and then pass on to the individual users. So as far as these users users are concerned, this whole Multiplexing is transparent. That is why you, you are communicating, say, for example, with your friend over the phone line, right? You're calling your phone. You're calling your, your friend's mobile phone. But the, the line from your phone to your friend's phone is not exclusive. It's not one single line. Right? It's being shared by maybe hundreds of users or thousands of users. You don't even know how many users are, are sharing it, right? As far as you are concerned, it's transparent. No difference to you. Right? 
So that's how it works. So there are three common techniques for multiplexing. Frequency division multiplexing, wavelength, and also time. The first two techniques are basically dealing with analog signals. And the time division multiplexing deals with digital signals. All right? So we'll, we'll study this trick. So frequency division multiplexing right, is, is related to analog signals. All right? So what frequency division multiplexing does is that it's very simple. You look at the word frequency division. It means that it will divide the transmission media according to frequency. Right? So you have, if you have three users here, three input lines, three users, then what the multiplexer will do, it will divide the, the transmission media into three channels, three reserved channels, one, one channel reserved for each user. Right? So that means the first user will transmit data or signals on to, in, using this particular frequency only, this particular part of the, of the media. Right? User 2 will transmit on channel 2, user 3 will trans transmit on channel 3. If you have five users, you have five channels and so on. Each user is reserved one channel, separate one. All right? So this is one example. You have four users, and we divide the frequency of the media, and then we say, all right, channel one, for user one, we'll use channel one, which is between 2001 and 4000 hertz bandwidth. User two will use channel two between 4001 and 6000, and so on. All right, so each one is given different bandwidth. All right, so they, they, so they will not interfere with one another signals. So each, each user will transmit their signals according to the channels, so the signals will not be, uh, it will not be uh, effective, uh, it, it will not affect other signals, right? But they all can transmit at the same time because they're using different frequencies. One example where it's used is basically satellite communication, right? You have multiple earth stations and then one satellite. So satellite has to communicate with multiple uh, earth stations. So what you do is each, each earth station will have a separate channel reserved for it with a particular frequency. Right? So one, one channel to upload and one channel to download. Right? That's right. So you look at the frequency, they're all different. Right? For uploading between Toronto and the Earth satellite, it is 5009. This one is 5990 and Portugal uses 6220 megahertz to upload. And download, we have three channels for each one of them. Right? So in this case, the Earth stations can, can communicate with satellite using uh, specific frequencies and it do not interfere with other signals. Right? So this is one, one example. So this is basically the frequencies, the bandwidth. So the, the bandwidth will be divided into multiple channels. Each channel will be reserved for different purposes. You can go for use for GPS, you can use for mobile, you can use for wireless, and so on. Right? As long as it's divided separately. So how does it work? Right? So this, this, this is basically what you do. If you remember earlier, we say that FDM, frequent division multiplexing, is deals with analog signals. Right? Analog signals, as we saw, we saw last time, when you transmit analog signals, you require a, a carrier signal, a carrier wave. The carrier wave will be modified according to the data, right? So in this case, what we need to do is, since we have three channels, we require three carrier waves. Each carrier wave is a particular frequency, right? So user, user number one's data coming in will be modified, will be adjusted. The carrier wave of frequency one will be mod modified according to the data coming in, all right? And then, Data coming from user two will be put onto, will change, it, will change the carrier frequency of channel two. And then we get a new signal, and same thing for channel three. Then the, the multiplexer will combine all these things and produce a composite signal. Right? So we use a three different carrier waves or carrier frequency. All, all of them are different, right? So different frequency. This is a different frequency. Then this one, then this one. Right? 
So on the, on the on transmission media, we transmit this combined signal or composite signal. On the other side, on the receiving side, the demultiplexer will do the opposite. We look at the composite signal and then you will have the three filters. The three filters will extract out the original, or rather the three different uh, combined signals and then from there we extract out the carrier frequency, then we can get the original data. All right? The main thing is that we have three different carrier frequencies. So you have five channels, you require five carrier frequencies. All right, so this is how it work. So if you look at this, if you look at this, we have we have our our data is analog or this data is it digital data or analog data? It's coming in input. Digital analog. Analog, right? Because it's a wave, right? And then we our carriers carrier. Uh, frequency is also a, a wave. So we combine this with this to get a analog signal output also. Right? So if you look at this, we have three, normally three, com three ways combined, right? whether it's frequency, division, uh, right? so then we see how it is actually combined. All right, this is one example. So here the data coming in is digital data, ones and zeros from the computers. Then we need to produce Remember, if you do FDM, the signals must be analog signals. So first we combine, so we convert the digital data into analog signals. So we use, one way to do is use AM, amplitude modulation, right? So one means is high, uh, high amplitude, zero is low amplitude, high, one is high and so on, all right? This is one, this is one signal based on one carrier wave. And then for the other user, we use same amplitude modulation, but with a different carrier, the different carrier signal, right? In this case, the frequency is higher, but the only thing what we do is we adjust the amplitude. Since it's AM, we adjust the amplitude of the carrier signal, right? One means high, high amplitude, zero is low amplitude. So we adjust it accordingly. So the frequency of this signal and this signal are the difference because they are two different channels, right? So they will not mix. After that, we combine the two and then we send them. All right? So FDM is normally used in phone systems, right? For example, your mobile phones or your, hand, or your phones at home, right? You have many, many phones. Uh, you, each house will have one phone line, right? And these individual houses, you have uh, the cable going out from the back of a house into a small tower. And then you go to a substation from your housing area. From your housing area, it goes to, a, say, a small uh, uh, a town. From town, it goes to city, and so on. So all these things will be combined, right? multiplexed according to it. So individual phone lines will normally have a frequency of, uh, or rather, a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz. Right? That's human voice. So what the multiplexer will do is that you modulate. You will say, all right, phone, phone number one, your frequency reserve is between 20 and 24 kilohertz, right? For user number two, you are supposed to transfer your signals between 24 and 28, and user three between 28 and 32, right? So you combine the signals, modulate it to this frequency, different frequencies, combine the signals, and then we transmit. On the receiving side, again, we do the same thing, there's a filter to extract out and then extract out the uh, carrier frequencies and then we extract out the indi original individual data from the signals. All right, so the main thing is that the frequencies must be different for each channel. That's how we, that's how we differentiate them. All right? Now, another thing you notice is that even if you go back here, the first example we saw, Right? We see the, you see the channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, there's a difference. The channel 2 does not start immediately after channel 1. There's a gap right? between the frequencies allocated, between the, between the bandwidths. So this we call the guard bands. Right? So FDM requires that the channels be separated by a small guard band. So this area, nobody can transmit. 
right? So your first channel is between this, this, this range and this range. Second channel is different, a different range, but there must be a small gap between them. Right? So this gap is to make sure that the signals from two channels do not overlap and do not interfere with one another. Right? That's the idea. So in FDM, we require that there must be a guard bands between the channels. Right? It can be small, it can be 10 kilohertz, it can be 1 kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, it depends on the uh, system. Right? Now the other thing is that since, for example, like this, we have four users, each user is given different range of frequencies to transmit and different channels, and there's a guard band between them. So if, if a particular user is not using, it's not transmitting at the same, at the currently, that channel is still reserved for that particular user. So even though there's no, the user is not transmitting anything, the channel has been reserved for the user. Right? So every user has a reserved bandwidth or channel, whether or not the, the person uses, uses it. So this is more likely, this is more, uh, a more common example, a more, more realistic example, right? The phone lines, how they combine four kilohertz each, 12 voice channels are combined into one, one group, which with, becomes 48 kilohertz, and 12 of them, uh, five groups of them combine into super group and super group, master group, and so on, right? So when you, when you say you make a call from, say, your mobile phone to the US, to your friend in the US, it's not a direct link. So most likely your call is being multiplexed many times with other users at the same time so that your call is to multiplex together with other users' calls to be transmitted to the United States. So be, be, maybe between Malaysia and US, there's only one connection, either a satellite connection here or a fiber optic cable, undersea fiber optic cable. Right? And everyone, all the users will be sharing this line. How do we do that? Multiplex it. All right? So that's frequency division multiplexing. Basically, we divide the frequencies of a, of a media into different channels. All right? The second one, wavelength. Wavelength is slightly different in the sense that what we're doing is that we are using light pulses to transmit data now. All right? And then we use fiber optic cables. So we use light pulses to transmit data over fiber optic cables. And how do we differentiate one signal from another is the color of the light. Right? So, and color of light is differentiated by its wavelength. So different color of light will be given to different user. Right? So different users coming in using different wavelength, lambda 1, 2, 3 or different color of the light, and this will be combined by the multiplexer to be sent over fiber, fiber optic cables in light pulses, and then on the other side, there will be a demultiplexer, and which will <laughs> extract out the original signals. All right? So the idea is something like this. I'm sure you, you've seen this picture before, right? Rainbow. Right? So rainbow tells you that, if, if you see a rainbow, it means that it tells you that the light consists of multiple colors. Right? The normal one we know is seven colors. All right? But there are actually the whole range of colors. So let's say seven colors. So that means each user can be given one different color as, as, a, channel, as a channel for transmission. Right? So now the users coming in, each user will be given different colors. So they transmit their data in light pulses with different colors. Then it will be combined, multiplexed. So what is sent here, or fiber optic cable, is one single beam of light. And on the other side, the demultiplexing is basically a prism, one light coming in, and then you extract out the individual colors from there. Each color represents one user. Right, same technique, except we are using light now. Right? So each light basically is one wavelength, and one wavelength is basically one channel. Right? And, and colors do not normally overlap. So, you, so here we use optical signals, right? light pulses over fiber optic cables. So again, the same example. So different users transmit their data in light pulses using different colors. Then it will be combined, and then on the other side, it will be extracted out. 
Right, same thing, different, different wavelength means different color. Right, so you can have multiple, many, many different users send data at the same time over a media, the fiber of the cable, and we can get a very high capacity and bandwidth. So WM, WDM is usually mainly used by broadcast television, for television signals, right? Telemedicine, video conferencing, tactical internet networking, or some other network systems, right? Main thing is that for WDM, we require fiber optic cables, right? And of course, fiber optic cables with light pulses is very, very high bandwidth, right? High capacity, so you can have, instead of, instead of a few users, 10 users, 20 users, you can have maybe hundreds and thousands of users, right? So better use of existing, existing bandwidth, transparent to data format and rate, channels are independent, and it's, it's quite mature technology, right? So as far as user is concerned, they, this thing is very transparent, it doesn't make a difference. Okay? So that's WGM. The third one, the TDM, right? Time division multiplexing. So, so far what you have seen that FDM and WDM are uh, concerned with analog signals, right? Either we divide the frequencies or divide, we divide the wavelength. The TDM is different. What we do? We divide the, the time. So we divide the time on the cable itself, right? What it means is that instead of having multiple channels, Different users will be given different time slice. Each user say, okay, you take one second, one second, one second, one second. After that, we go back again, round robin. Right? We, we slice the time used on the cable itself. Right? So in this case, let's say we have, we have four users. What it does is that first we take the data from user one and then we send it for a small amount of time, say one millisecond. And then user two, for one millisecond, we get the, get the data of user two, and then we send it. Then user three, user four, and so on. After that, go back to user one again. Right? So we go in circles. But each time, if you notice, each time only one data is being transmitted. So compared to TDM, uh, compared to WDM, FDM, multiple signals are traveling at the same time on FDM and WDM. By TDM, it's only one piece of data is transmitting at one time. But the time is shared now, all right? So that's the difference. So here, basically, we're doing with digital data here. So there are two types of 3DM, synchronous and statistical. All right? Synchronous is the one where we have reserved time slots for each user, and statistical is time slot is given when it, whenever it's required. And so in this case, for example, we have four users, each user will be given one time slice, right? Take user. So even though user number three is not sending data, but the time is already given to the particular user. Right? His turn is still there, right? That's the thing about synchronous TDM. Let's take an example. So we have three, three users coming in, three lines coming in, A, B, and C. Right? So what you need to do is we now will get data from A, B, and C. Combine them into a frame and then send it out. Multiplex it and send it out. So we need to create frames here. So the frame will consist data of A, B, and C. So we take the first portion of A, A1, and then we take a, a time slice of B, B1, and then we time slice of C1, and then we combine into a frame and then send it out. Next frame, we take the, the next piece of data from the A, B, and C, frame number two, and then so on, and frame number three. So each frame will consist data of all the input lines. For a, right, the data will be for a small amount of time. So you read for, you read for one millisecond, maybe for example here, A1, read, read, read for one uh, millisecond, and then put the data in the frame, Read one millisecond from B, put the data here. Read one, one, one millisecond from C, data here. Put it into a frame and then send it out. Okay? So, of course, this particular 
link must be faster than n times faster than the individual line. So if you have three lines coming in at n, then the output must be n times faster. Right? To make sure you can capture all the data. Right? So the time slot, so if this is the time slot here, t the time slot for on the frame will be one third for each particular user. Right? We'll take a look at an example of this. So let's take an example of this. So we have four input lines coming in from at one megabits per second. So one million bits are coming in every second for each input lines. Right? And we want to multiplex it using TDM. So how fast should the output line be? Right? So output should be four times of this, obviously. Right? So the output data rate will be output data rate will be four times four megabits. Yeah. I can't see it. Right, the C there. So what we do is that we will we will take we will take one here, one zero one zero, that's our first frame. Then we take one zero zero zero, that will be our second frame, and then third frame, fourth frame. Right? We will create frames by taking one bit each time from the each input line. Right? So if you look at the bit duration, input line, if it's one megabits per second, the bit duration is one millisecond, or one microsecond. Right? Output rate will be four times the input rate. So the bit rate here will be four megabits per second. Output bit duration will be will be one one fourth of the of the input line, right? Just like the formula here. Time slot is one third of the each time slot duration is one third of the uh, incoming, right? Because you have three here. So how many frames do we need to output? Frames you, number of frames you output is same as the number of bits coming in here. Right, so it's the same as input bit there, so that will be about 1 million frames per second. Because each frame will, will consist data from four input lines. Right? So, so our, our frames must go at the same rate as the incoming data. Because each frame will consist data from all four lines. But if you look at the bit rate, the bit rate now is faster, it's four times because each frame consists of four bits, right? Okay. Now this example is that we are taking one bit from each input line. We can do a little bit different. Instead of taking one bit, we take two bits. So our frame now consists of taking two bits from each input line. One zero, one zero here, and then zero, 01 from here, and then 11 one, one from here. So we take two bits from each input line, put into a frame, and then send it. So we're now sending eight bits in a frame. Right? Next frame will be the next two, next two bits, and so on. Right? So now, if our input rate is now 100 kilobits per second for four individual lines, our output bit rate is there the four times also, four times this, so it's 400 kilobits per second, right? How many frames do we need to send? Where each frame is eight bits, so 400,000 400, bits per second, you divide by eight, you get 50,000 frames per second, right? This is the bits, this is the bit rate, each frame is eight bits, so 400,000 divided by eight is 50,000. Right? So you get 50,000. So because here it's 100,000 100, bits per second, our frames is now only half because we are taking two bits at a time. Earlier, our frame rate is the same as input rate because we take one bit at a time. Right? So if we take two bits at a time, then our frames can be less. Half of this now. Right? Bit duration is the same thing. Right? Each frame will be 20 milliseconds, 20 microseconds. Right? So we can combine the time slice. So this is basically say 
the time slice is divided according to different needs. So for movie channel data, we coming in, we can take so much data, send in that, followed by audio channel, cable channel, and so on. Each channel or each user will be give, given different time slices, right, depending on needs. All right, so this, so this basically says that to, for TDM to work, when we start sending in data like this, we need to collect, we need to re, read the input bits, um, we need to, need to read the bits coming in from input lines very, very fast. Put it into a frame and then send. On the other side, the demultiplexer will do the opposite. Right? You will read the data from the frames, the bits, and then extract out. Right, so, so two sides must be synchronized properly. So the multiplexer here must be able to take it very fast, take the data as, as fast as it comes, put it into a frames, and then send it out. And then the demultiplexer must be able to extract out the individual bits from the frame and then put into the individual lines. So these two must be synchronized perfectly. Otherwise, if this is collecting data and then sending to the frame, this is not working at the same time, at the same speed, or as as same synchronized, then would be a problem. Right? You cannot read properly whatever is being sent. Right? So the two multiplexer and demultiplexer has to be properly synchronized. Right? Now this is what we were talking earlier. Right? So you have multiple input lines coming in. We will take the data with, from the each input line, put it into a, a frame, and then send it out. Right? For example, like this. So first frame consists of the first piece of information, A, B, C, D. In frame number two, C is no, long, no longer sending data. So if, if a user is no longer sending data, the, res, the slot is still reserved for that particular user. All right? Frame number three consists only two pieces of information because user, two, user B and user C are no longer transmitting data but the slots are still reserved for them. Right? As you said earlier, TDM, synchronous TDM reserves time slot for every individual user, whether or not that particular user wants to send data. Right? So even, even though like this, at, at the later, only A is transmitting data, the other user is not transmitting data, but the, the slots are still, empty slots are still being sent. Right? So this is basically wastage. But then you have no choice because that's how TDM works. Right? Because they go in sequence, right? The first data belongs to A, second data belongs to next user number two, third data belongs to user number three, and so on, right? Just like this. We collect information in this particular order, one, zero, one, zero. And then one, zero, 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 like this. So we must put in the same sequence. We cannot jumble up them. Otherwise, it will be a problem. Right? So the sequence is important. Now, so far what you have seen is that our input lines are all same speed. Right? Input lines are the same speed. So for multiplexing to work is that normally the input lines are of the same speed. But what happens if one of the input lines is not on the same speed? If same speed, then multiplexing is, is easier, right? But what if it doesn't? Then we have different strategies to handle this particular situation, all right? So the first one. So let's say we have five input lines, 40, 40, 40, then 20, 20. So what we need, need to do is to make all of them the same. How do we do? The, so what we do, we can do the 20 and 20, we can combine them into 40 first. So we multiplex these two input lines, the, the slower ones. And so once this is multiplexed, then the output bit rate will be 40. Now this is the same as all four. So now, then we can do a, a second level of multiplexing. So in this case, we have two levels of multiplexing to combine the five lines. Right, so we call them the multi-level multiplexing. Right, so one level to make the the input lines with different speeds, combine them first into similar one. Then the second level combines all the same ones. 
right? So that's how we do. At the end, it's still the same, right? So 40, 40, 40 plus 20, 20 is still 160. No difference. But the thing is that we need to combine. Multiplexer will only work if the input lines are of, of the same uh, speed. All right? So this is one. What happens the other way now? Right? You have 25, 25, 25, 50. Right? So you can combine them earlier. We get 25, 25. We can combine them into make it 50. But then this we cannot combine with anyone. Right? So the, we cannot work this way. So the other option is that we break up the larger one into smaller one. Right? So in this case, what we can do is that we will take, we reserve two slots for the fast one, and then one slot each for the slower one. Because this 50 kilobits per second is twice the 25 speed, so therefore we reserve two slots for it. We reserve two slots, then the speed becomes the same. Right? So multiple slots. So User number one gets two slots. User number two, three, and four gets one slot each. All right? So this will make the speed similar again. All right? So we, we change the number of slots right, accordingly. But what happens if some cases where we, we're going to do the earlier one? Multiple levels are going to work. Uh, the slot also going to work. For example, like 50, 50, and 46. Right? No matter which way you combine, we can't do that. Right? So in this case, what we need to do is that to make this one, 46, similar to 50, we will need to do adding extra empty bits into it to make it the same rate as the, the others. So we add in extra characters, empty characters into it to make the slower one as fast as the, the main ones. So we call this the Pulse stuffing, right? So pulse stuffing basically does is that just to change from 46 to 50, put in extra, extra bits to make the data rate the same as the others. Then we can combine them as usual, right? So this is normally done automatically, right? So the multiplexer will try to do this kind of techniques to make sure that the users from of different rates can combine together. Right. Now for synchronization, right, we saw the synchronization problem earlier here. Right? So to make sure the frames are coming in at, at, at properly and we do not miss out frames. So then one way to do is that we can put a pattern, a synchronization pattern in the frames itself. So we take the data from A, B, and C. At the same time, we put a particular pattern here. So our, our pattern, synchronization pattern is that each frame will have either 1 or 0, 1 followed by 0, followed by 1, followed by 0, followed by 1, and so on. Right, so once we receive this particular frame, and the n is 1, we know the next frame should end with a 0, right, to make sure that we receive the frame correctly. So in this case, if, if somehow this frame is lost, and after 1, you receive a 1, which is not right, then we know something <coughs> is missing. Right, so the error checking we can do in this way. At the same time, we can also synchronize the clocks. The one, zero, we know after one will become zero, and zero will become a one. Right? So again, where TDM is used, is TDM is also used heavily by um, phone companies also. Right? But TDM, if you remember, is, is basically deals with digital signals. Right? FDM is analog signals. TDM is digital signals. Right? But we can also use it for phone systems. Right? So we have phone lines, digital phone lines, for example, All right? for, your, for, your, for your internet lines. If you, you, can, you, can, you can say I purchase internet line, right? a lease line, and so on. That's basically what it is. So T, T1, T2, T3, whichever. So a company can say we want a T4 line right? for our, our internet. That means this is the, the, the bid rate for it. Right? It can support so many, how many voice channels, and so on. Right? So this basically shows you how the channels are combined. Right? Each channel is basically 64 big kilobits. Right? Combine them. So 24 of them can you can combine into one. DS, uh, 24 of them can combine into one DS line, and so on. Right? 
So remember the phone lines. If you use the if you use the TDM for telephone communication, then telephone basically is analog signals, analog data coming in. So we need to convert into digital first, right? So and we saw that there are two techniques, right? PCM, pulse, pulse code modulation, or then delta modulation. So in this case, we are using PCM to convert from waveform into bits, right? So these bits will be combined into TDM, then. right? So we can use a 8,000 samples per the sampling rate, sampling rate is, is eight, 8 kilohertz, right? so 8,000 samples per second, and each sample takes 8 bits, right? The, the quantization level, right? So we get 64 kilobits per second, the rate. Then we can, can com combine. Right, so that's that's the synchronous, right? Statistical TDM is slightly different variation. What it does is that time slot will only be created if the input line has data to send. Right? For example, like we have five users, only three users are sending data at one time. Therefore, only three slots will be created. Right, so slots are created if there is data to send. No, no data design, no slot created. So in other words, no empty slots will be wasted in statistical, right? So this is the comparison. So in synchronous, we have empty slots reserved for all, all, all users. Each user will have an empty slot reserved for it. And there's a synchronization uh, bit. In statistical, no. In this case, at first, first frame, only A, B, and D are sending data. So therefore, we create the frame concerning data of A1, and B, and also only D. Right? C will not include. We will not include empty slots. A second, second frame, B, D, and only E. Right? So the sequence of data in the frame will be different now. So we need to differentiate them. So how do we differentiate them? We use address. So in this case, together with the data, we need to put in, this data belongs to who? It belongs to A. This data belongs to who? B. This data belongs to who? D. Right? In the synchronous, we don't say that. We don't give the address because it's always default. The first piece of data will belong to A, second will be B, third will be C, fourth will be D, and fifth will be E. Whether or not that's data doesn't matter. The sequence is always there. That's why you get empty slots, right? So in statistical, we only put in actual data, right? So then we require that each data must be accompanied by the indicator to say this data belongs to which input line, right? So differences, there's a slot addressing. So there's addressing with each piece of data. The slot is bigger, so in, now it's bigger because we require we require each piece of data must have address of the input line. Right. Third difference, there's no synchronization bits in this case. So here we have synchronized one, zero, one, zero, and each frame is synchronized. Here we don't need that. Right? And same thing also, the link capacity might not be fully utilized. Only certain percentage of input slots will be built. Right. So in this case, for statistical TDM, we are sending data right, together with the address. Data, address, data, address, data, address. So our frame will be much, much larger compared to the uh, synchronous TDM. Okay? All right? Okay, that's it then. Mm -hmm.